let's make our caterpillars my butter knife so one caterpillar second caterpillar third caterpillar so trying to decide a tree oh that's a huge one Today the passbys think I'm, I'm so weird <laughs> like what the hell is this girl doing under this tree this is what i mean it's so annoying it just just keeps falling off there's one half there and one half there i hope i get at least like one bite mark I'm like Oh hi mateys! Today I thought of filming a kind of different video. Basically, one of my modules I take for my first year is evolution and behavior. And our practical for this week is based on designing and running field experiments. So I found it really interesting because we were sent this little package by the Department of Zoology who basically conduct the course. And what we're doing today is we're going to investigate the impact of different color patterns in caterpillars on bird predation. So what we were given is these pieces of plasticine out of which we need to make plasticine caterpillars and then go fix them on trees in our college garden and count the number of bite marks to estimate the bird predation rate. The central research question of this um, experiment is to figure out the difference between being aposematic versus being cryptically colored. So asomatic. Aso so here's a picture of an aposematic caterpillar. Aposematism is a strategy employed by certain insects to advertise that they are distasteful or poisonous or toxic by having bright colors. On the other hand, cryptically colored insects may be quite palatable. So their best defense is to camouflage, which is why they tend to have less bright colors and they tend to um, use techniques of camouflaging to defend themselves from their predators. Now since we're going to be making our caterpillars out of plasticine, it's possible for us to count the number of bite marks of any kind of predators, for example insects, birds or mammals on the plasticine caterpillars and each of these predators have their own characteristic bite marks such as this picture above. And this makes it possible to determine whether an insect, bird or mammal has attacked our caterpillars. So here are the components of our field experiment. Number one is the research question, which is, does predation pressure differ between aposematically colored and cryptically colored caterpillars? So in this case, our cryptically colored caterpillars are serving as our control for the experiment. The hypothesis is that aposematically colored caterpillars will show fewer bite marks than cryptically colored caterpillars in the same environmental conditions. Of course, for an experiment, we need an independent variable and a dependent variable. So the independent variable for this experiment is the color of the caterpillars or the pattern, the coloration pattern of the caterpillars. And the dependent variable is the number of bite marks. So right now I'm going to be making my plasticine caterpillars and then hopefully tomorrow morning or anytime tomorrow, I'm going to go and place them out in my college grounds. So let's make our caterpillars. So we've been given um, three colors of plasticine, brown, three orange pieces, and three black pieces. So we need to make the aposematic ones joining the orange and the black pieces together to form like a striped appearance. And the brown ones can basically be used as, as they have been given. So what I need to do now is I need to cut the orange and the black um, pieces of plasticine into 5 mm um, wide pieces. So I have my knife with me, my butter knife, and I have a ruler, so I'm going to cut it right now so I can join it together. Okay, so I have my pieces of plasticine cut. We need to make three caterpillars each of 50 mm length each. So, so we've cut out 5 mm of each color, five of each color for one caterpillar, second caterpillar, third caterpillar. So now I have to just join these pieces together into a caterpillar shaped rod. <laughs> Up. 
I just have to do the same for these two other groups as well. And I'm all done. <laughs> Okay, so it is the next morning and I am going to go out into my field in about um, 20 minutes. So I've kept my caterpillars ready in this packet. I'm just looking at the protocol and writing down the main points in the notebook so I know exactly what I'm doing when I'm out on the field. So I waste less time, plus it's like kind of cold outside, so obviously I don't want to be out for too long. So this is a bit scrawny, but it's just the main details that I need to know and all the things I've taken into account or ensure that I do on the field. So it's just a little note for myself and this will help when I write my report afterwards. <sighs> wow, just look at my luck. Just when I was over to step out, it starts raining. Try to decide a tree. Which one? Under that, behind this. Let's go see both trees. Oh, this is a big one. Oh, that's a huge one. Oh my god, it actually camouflages. Well, it is the same color. Yeah, it's perfect. So I put my brown caterpillar and then the A4 semantic stripe one is going 15 cm from the... Oh my God, okay, so this is proving to be way harder than I expected because the the clay keeps like snapping off or like doesn't like keep snapping off in the middle here. So half the time I'm just trying to mm, like keep it on. I'm just really hoping it stays on, but I think it's looking good till now. Like this one is this one is nicely camouflaging clearly. And this one is like the aposematic one. This is what I mean. It's so annoying. It just just keeps falling off. There's one half there and one half there. And... Ah! Still trying to currently fix my caterpillar. I feel like the passerby think I'm, I'm so weird. <laughs> like, what the hell is this girl doing under this tree? They purposely asked us to actually select a tree that's kind of away from the people. So people don't like pluck the caterpillars off. So this tree is like kind of near the main entrance, but then I'm putting it on the, on the other side of the tree. So it's not really that visible. This is honestly the hardest part. Like once you make the caterpillars easy, like the making it straight um, stripe, but then you have to curve it into a U, which is when the half of the body keeps snapping off. <laughs> oh my God, man, my legs are... <gasps> on the final stages of fixing this caterpillar on, so hopefully it stays. I think it's looking okay. Oh my god, yes, finally! So I have one, two pairs, and my third pair. So basically, it's supposed to be from the ground 30 centimeters, 45 centimeters, and 60 centimeters. So I have my three pairs. You might be wondering like wait it's so unlikely that like in the wild this is going to be like six pairs of caterpillar on one tree so this is kind of like a flawed experiment because it doesn't oh my god this lawnmower guy is so loud. <laughs> every evolution and behavior student from every college has been given this assignment so what the what our professor wants is for everyone to follow the exact same condition so they're able to use the data well so in that way he kind of standardized the procedure to make it like one tree with like 30, 45, 60 um, cm height. But another key point, I guess, about experiments is that in this process of standardization and like ensuring replicability, you are often compromising on what is called ecological validity. So it's not like these caterpillars are gonna be like this in the actual environment. So there's usually this trade-off between experimental design and ecological validity, which is kind of one of the drawbacks of experiments, but it's just something you have to compromise on if you want to get um, replicable results. So now I'm just gonna use maybe some water and firm down the edges of all of these caterpillars so and sh hopefully they don't fall. I hope I get at least like one bite mark. I'm like kind of excited. My professor said that it worked for him in his garden. So I'm just hoping that like it kind of works. I don't know. But the good part is it was um, drizzling slightly here but this, this tree is like has a lot of um, like leaves <laughs> above it. So hopefully even if it rains, nothing happens. Also, I've seen a lot of squirrels around these trees. So hopefully like they bite my caterpillars. I 
Okay, my family of caterpillars is all set up, and I even like tried and like I realized that these caterpillars come close to like a natural leaf, so hopefully it looks like natural enough for predators to try and eat them. So I think that's a success. So let's just try and hope for the best now. Fingers crossed. I need to come back in three days um, at the same time. Beautifully, it's exactly 2 p.m. right now. So I need to come back three days later, exactly at 2 p.m. and notice what's happened to my three sets of caterpillars. So that, that is the tree that my caterpillars are on. It's beautiful sun is out now. So there's the sun and I'm just walking back to my room. Yay, success. <laughs> okay, well, no, not actually success yet, lol. Success in the experimental procedure, I think. At least I'm done putting it. I have to wait for the results now, so. Hopefully, yay, success.